it's dangerous out there, and these trucks are carrying tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of cargo. We're the armed attorneys. Today we're talking about truck drivers being able to carry their personal self-defense firearm as they travel state to state. Um, stick around for our pro tip on how you can invoke the safe passage provision of federal law should you have to travel uh, too far west or too far to the northeast. And before we get started, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting the like button. And if you're one of our nearly 80% of viewers who are not subscribed to the channel, um, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps us. And if you don't like us, you can always unsubscribe later. No harm, no foul. And that brings us to the meat and potatoes of our discussion, which is what is the federal law when it comes to commercial truck drivers keeping a personal defense firearm in their vehicle? Now, um, I think a lot of people are surprised to hear that there isn't a federal law. And this is, you know, a good time to refresh that, you know, the law doesn't tell us what we're allowed to do, it tells us what we can't do. And so when people say, hey, where's the law saying, you know, as a, as a truck driver that I can carry, there's nothing to point them to. But that brings us to what law is going to govern in that regard, and that's state law, wouldn't you say? Yeah, in the absence of any federal law regarding, you know, truck drivers carrying personal defense firearms. And there are some regulations out there regarding the transport, the commercial transport of explosives, firearms. Right. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your personal defense weapon. In the absence of any federal law, you have to rely on the states. And every state is going to vary. Um, my recommendation to truck drivers is generally um, get as many carry permits as you possibly can. Get your home state carry permit, get your non-resident permits that are going to open up some other states to you that you have to travel through. That's the easiest way to make sure that you're obeying state law, but you have to check every state you're going to go through um, and potentially you have to either invoke federal law or, you know, if that unfriendly state is your destination state, you may not be able to take that firearm on your trip in its entirety. Exactly right. So we have our states that maybe they don't require a license or permit or they recognize a license or permit that's issued to you. And, and that makes it pretty easy, you know, saying, hey, maybe I'd be allowed to carry in this state. And then it's compounded. I'm going to raise the issue and then we don't have a great answer for you. But um, a lot of folks, you know, have to sleep in their cab. Mm -hmm. They're over the road truck drivers. And, and so there's this additional compound consideration of, hey, when this this vehicle is being used as my habitation, do I get yeah. extra protections under self-defense law? Again, it varies by state by state. But there's a lot of states that might that would say, hey, if you're using it as your house, your habitation or your dwelling, you may get extra protections. Yeah, but it really does vary by state. And that is something that you need to be, I think, incredibly cautious with. Yes. And I, I think that's the overarching theme is, you know, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Mm -hmm. And you have to know the law of the state that you're traveling to. But that brings up an issue that comes up frequently, which is federal property. Let's say military installations. Sure. Military installations. And again, I mean, this is, it puts a lot of um, onus on truck drivers to have to do a whole bunch of legwork to make sure that they are safe. Because not only are you checking your state law, state to state, but if you are going to hit federal property, if you're going to hit a military installation, you need to see if they're going to let you check that firearm in at the gates because it's not going to be allowed on the military installation. And some will let you check it in and some will not. And yeah. you just have to call ahead of time and yeah, see what their policy is. It's the base commander's discretion mm -hmm. as to whether or not they want to allow firearms on property. And a lot of military installations choose not to. Um, I think that also brings us to federal property generally. You know, the general rule is firearms aren't allowed on federal property. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that brings up kind of port authorities. We yes. don't have a federal port authority, but a lot of people kind of mix those two things together. That's going back to our states. You know, our federal ports are controlled by state and local authorities. And so what we see, though, a lot of these ports are in big cities. Mm -hmm. You know, so we got Houston, New York. <laughs> we got uh, San Diego. They got a port, right? Louisiana. Uh, so we got some large ports. But what we see in most of these ports is that they do have a no weapons, no firearms, no guns policy. And so they have that discretion to exclude those just like any other private property owner would. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think now we have one more consideration yes. for truck drivers. I'm sorry, guys. Um, and that's your employer. Um, now, your employer cannot make it a crime for you to carry where it was not already a crime in that state. But they can discipline you or terminate you. And, you know, see, I think we have a video on that as well. You can yes. check out the description and um, watch that as well because your employer does have a lot of power. And that brings us to our attorney pro tip of the day, which is about the safe passage provision of 18 USC 926A. And that brings, you know, if you have to pass through one of these gun hostile mm -hmm. states, a state that doesn't recognize your license or permit, or maybe they don't allow a loaded concealed handgun at all uh, when you're passing through that state. And generally, when we say gun hostile, we're talking about the West Coast, the state of Illinois, 
in the Northeast minus Vermont, New Hampshire, yeah. and Maine. And to give credit to those guys. But what it breaks down to essentially is three key components. That the firearm is unloaded in case, locked up or inaccessible. That you are traveling. And that when you start your destination, it's in a legal place where you're allowed to possess a firearm. And when you end your destination, you're in a place that you're allowed to possess the firearm. And this question came up a lot. Uh, what if we had someone who's driving from Florida, let's say to Maine? Mm -hmm. Do they have to, you know, go sleep deprived to the Northeast? Could you resolve no. that? Yeah. Yes, sure. Let's say that you stop and spend the night in Pennsylvania. That's a good safe place generally, right? So that means that from Pennsylvania to Maine, when you start your trip again, Pennsylvania is your new starting destination. You're legal there. So that's okay. You get to go through some potentially unhostile states if you have to. Um, it really does make your life a little bit easier, but that it is when you cease traveling, that is your new destination or end point. And that's the other thing we have to talk about is traveling is not defined by statute and not well defined by case law. And you cannot count on the courts giving you the benefit of the doubt. No. So, I mean, you know, we say, and the most conservative legal advice to give you is um, if you stop moving other than maybe a restroom break or um, you know, to get gas, you have probably ceased traveling and where you are is your new destination. So make sure where you cease traveling is not a gun unfriendly state. And, and keep in mind also in these unfriendly states, a lot of them treat this firearms owners protection act, this safe passage provision as a defense to prosecution. So it doesn't keep you from, you know, getting charged with a gun tr crime, dragged into court and having to prove that you meet all these qualifications. So it can be very perilous. And so if your end destination was in a gun hostile state, well, then you're not going to qualify. If it's a friendly state where you'd be allowed to lawfully possess the firearm, maybe so long as you meet all those qualifications, but it could at the end of the day still be a defense to prosecution. We have a full breakdown of the Firearm Owners Protection Act in a separate video that will be in the linked, uh, linked in the comment section below. But we hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit the like button, consider subscribing and help us fight the anti 2 a algorithm by sharing this video. And please question and comment below. And we actually are doing this video because of truck drivers who wrote on our page and said, please do this. So we read them, we take them very seriously. Until next time, we're the armed attorneys.